Hello everyone, February the 20th. I guess I'm in uh, recording mode right now. <laughs> Actually already yesterday, short after I finished, I thought, oh, I have to make another one to give you a little bit of a perspective. Sometimes this is important. So what we're looking at here is um, Aspolos final connection with the galactic center which actually is an opposition 2710 it is here and this is where the galactic center is yes it's not here in the chart because i have no charting option here but i have done the exact research by um uh, the the second of the arc so this is the exact opposition moment and this is the fifth time happened in 2021, I guess first time, and this is now the final touch. Aspolos, as I have many times uh, uh, said, is a key figure here in this um, uncovering of all the crimes which have been committed. That's truly the mission of this energy. It is a serious interest in all the dark and difficult and um, convoluted and you name it, um, corrupt and um, and not what it appears to be. Um, really that Sherlock Holmes energy, I think that really describes this energy best. At the galactic center means it is super amplified. That's what basically the galactic center is. It's what's also known as the central sun. It is that hub around our, our solar system once in 250 million years as circles around. And all the stars we see in the night sky, they are all part of our local, um, um, part of our neighborhood within the galaxy, so to say. Hmm. So all the stars we see are maybe within the range of uh, several hundred light years. and think of the galactic center 26,000 light years away in this degree here 27 and 10 minutes of arc here in Sagittarius as we speak progressing by one degree every 72 years to to what is known as the precession of the equinoxes which makes the whole zodiac shift um, over the star constellations and the zodiac again as we use it in western astrology is basically more uh, accurate would be its earth's auric field if you want hmm? which is um, naturally easily subdividable in four quadrants and the harmonics are um, that way that it's actually a 12-fold structure if you would think of cymatics that's kind of the frequency of earth which creates naturally that 12-fold structure of 12 pieces uh, in an orange you could think so that's actually what the zodiacal signs are in truth because the constellations out there they are Nobody really has drawn lines into the sky, so to say. So the constellations are just pictorial groupings of stars, uh, which um, if we can imagine that was in the early days of, 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 of civilizations on Earth. They were navigating, they had to plant uh, crops and, and go at the right season to, to hunt their prey and things like that. So they were absorbing, observing the sky naturally and were um, trying to chart the structure of it so they would be able to uh, predict certain recurring events. That's how the constellations came into play at the first uh, in the first um, place. So whatever we know as the Big Dipper, naturally in each culture has a, a slightly different name, but it's a logical combination of bright stars. That's what basically a constellation is. So all those claims about constellations um, being um, 
exactly mapped out is um, not uh, really true. They're all born out of human mind in the first place. And they're just some of these stars. For example, just look at the Big Dipper. They, uh, I mean, we have no depth depth perception um, uh, because I mean really uh, how, how can you know if something is four light years away or 40 or 400 anyway so the stars in the Big Dipper are anywhere between 40 and 400 light years away from us so some of them are substantially farther away from what we think is close together so it's really um, there's some optical illusions there so the most um, safe way I would even say of um, charting the cosmos is using Earth's um, natural grid of left right up and down as the framework to chart what we see and that is what astrology really is in our western ways and again just to emphasize that uh, Vedic uh, astrology particularly is focused mostly on the uh, constellations but the main reason there is easily to understand in the tropical country of India they have barely any seasons so really the seasonal differences are so small that it doesn't really make big difference what what season it is it's always nice and yes sure there's also rhythms but it's not that prevalent anyway that's a little discourse on the side So um, if any chart gives away what is um, uh, the future, then it is this one. Beautiful chart, powerful. Pluto opposing Pallas. Hmm? And again, that's the exact moment when Aspolos is opposing the galactic center. And this again is uh, charted for Greenwich, for the zero meridian. So all over uh, the globe from north to south pole. These two planets will be exact in this position. Hmm? Pallas in the first degree of Aquarius. Um, uh, Leo and Pluto, first degree of Aquarius. Now, this is um, an exploding mind, you could say, almost. Uh, literally, uh, 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 that challenge to um, understand it all. Uh, it, it needs, um, uh, it's, 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 it's kind of um, super intense in the first degree of Leo and but. Uh, but in a good way, when I say exploding mind, it means there's no way around. I guess compelling would be almost uh, another big word here. There's no way to escape a certain um, focus and um, and then um, coming to terms with. I guess that's a, a big word here too. Um, you see, palace is not... P palace is processing perception which is basically just mercury's input what we see here feel and so on um, that is then processed and put into patterns and in literally in structure it's it's also the uh, abstraction of what reality is all that and, and Pluto here in the first degree of um, Aquarius I mean as such this is big I mean we all know this is happening in April I guess or late March and the main thing here is that Pluto will activate the Jupiter Saturn conjunction which we had here in the last days of 2020 actually on winter solstice 2020 at zero degrees at 29 or something Jupiter and Saturn had their first in 200 years meeting in uh, an air sign. So this was really ringing in a whole new epoch of human history. Every 200 years, the element of Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions changes. Yes, there was kind of a, an, um, a link created as the very first of these 
air sign activations happened in 1980 after 200 years of being in the earth element very materialistic in that sense so the 20 years between 1980 and 2000 already had a new flavor and if those of you who are old enough can definitely think back and see what i mean this these were 20 years of forward looking uh, lots of great ideas lots of um, enthusiasm positive energy it was that libra energy uh, they had a conjunction libra in 1980 81 jupiter and saturn so it was that libra energy uh, of bringing everything into a new balance and and of reaching out to one another and um, creating ho all kinds of new social opportunities and networks and then came the bummer in 2000 when for one last time jupiter and saturn had their conjunction in an earth sign for one last time in a long cycle of 800 years or so and it happened to be in capricorn and you know what how we had to go back and uh, uh, really uh, have a harsh face plant you could say with what happened in the aftermath of that 20, 2000 jupiter saturn conjunction just uh, think of 9 11 and um, followed by the, the 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 stock market crash and um, all of that and then we had a fukushima and and you name it it was a very uh, difficult 20 years and we are now in a fresh cycle and naturally has its own challenges all that aquarian um, craziness is definitely one of the challenges of these 20 years it's kind of coming um taming that um that that frequency in a way that aquarian energy can be extremely wild and and outlandish and um, actually going to an absolute overdrive and extreme which we definitely see in many ways so pluto activating jupiter and saturn this is big this on already uh, tells us this is an important event uh, that um, moment when Aspolos is uh, making that final connection in which is kind of like the moment of a transference happening between the galactic centers energy that extremely strong uh, um, uh, signal which is going through earth and um, to Aspolos from our perspective we are kind of in the middle of it uh, the galactic center would be right at the other side and earth would be in the middle that's how you have to think of it so it is always these direct connections which are kind of the moment it sparks when it's when two charged um elements are at at their closest position then the uh, uh, an um kind of all of a sudden the energy ionizes between them and they're connected that's how you have to look at this and it happens that venus is here in that same degree this makes the whole thing a uh, real um fireworks and in a positive way seen this is a celebration this is a big celebration we are seeing here with the first degree Scorpio moon here with Homia and Elatus, Homia most particularly, who is, as we speak, um, still a few months um, 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 in the past as, as uh, from from this perspective seen. So anyway, what I want to say is Homia is still in, in um, Scorpio and we'll go back eventually into uh, libra one more time but anyway this degree is supercharged with, charged with um, homia energy which is all about revolution and rebirth reform uh, all these words are super super important homia is a extremely dynamic environment it's actually the only of the planets we know of which has an elongated shape it looks like a, a football an american football and spins once every four hours around its far ends so there is a quite quite a, a radial momentum there and all plants are strong radial momentums they are vortices you could say they are the places where 
really um the wheel is turned where evolution is powered by jupiter is another uh, exactly the d1 um uh, planet with the greatest um, radial momentum in the solar system so it gives you that jovial expansiveness and 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 the power and naturally at the south node here um these are um tremendous times we are getting into i mean it is this the fight is still on naturally with mars here up high a spiritual war by this time very openly and very clear mars opposing arocot and hilonome yes it's all about a clarity and healing these are the components of what is going on with aries here at the seventh house cusp just um jupiter coming out of a conjunction with this feminine um warrior spirit of taking on any fight in search for truth that's kind of the energy you get in a nutshell here throwing in the golden apple golden golden apple of discord into the round of the gods it is wanting to get to the bottom of it all hmm? at the seventh house cusp yes this is um asking calling for trials calling for the a serious and um in-depth investigation of whatever is uncovered and there's a lot of that as we all know i mean it's just not yet fully in the mainstream but as more and more people get on board our movement is becoming so strong i just said to uh, my my darling wife um this evening if they had um I mean they're panicking hmm? let's put it that way uh, just look at this 15 minute uh, city thing it came out of nowhere out of the left field you could say but all of a sudden it's everywhere all over the planet we hear stories from china we will hear them from wherever from um, singapore i guess japan everywhere if they had rolled this idea out slowly slowly from one place to the next uh, i i said yes we would probably if they have done it in a five-year term they would have gotten away with it but not this time and they're running against the wall um, and and if you're following a little bit that story it's all over i mean everywhere there's um rallies and um demonstrations and whatnot um people are standing up to it everywhere at once and we have the global communication even though there's suppression of information we know it i mean they cannot fool the people who already are in the know and we are just the start we are just ahead a, a little bit of the of the rest it's happening i mean people are really getting to a place where the tranquilizers are not working anymore to be um, very blunt here it's kind of they were under that spell and and it happens now that the the effect of these drugs whatever and, and i mean they probably have upped anyway the the level of frequencies and whatnot and of uh, food colorings and such but it's not working anymore people are waking up despite all that um deterrence and trying to capture um their minds and pull them to into a certain direction by all these um distractions as we know and um so it's it's a crazy time i mean absolutely crazy pluto is in the last degree of capricorn right now and getting into this first degree of aquarius and it's kind of everything is is gonna do be topsy-turvy if you want to say it that way i mean the moon here at the critical point between this opposition is feeling it all trans um a kind of what's the word here processing it and and uh, digesting it and the moon is um is the people hmm? and uh, then there's the south node here so it is a also a reconnection to um our our power the 
the south node is extremely powerful so this is truly um a revolutionary power of of um of transformation which is at work and uh, there's enthusiasm and fire as it's homia here who has given us all that that fire that volcanic um a glow which is irresistible in many ways it just um, rolls over when when its time comes in a very conscious way um supported by palace and pluto both in the first house this is a powerful powerful chart with all these plants in the seventh house again i can't stop raving about that one just then also the saturn AW197 opposition here, which happened probably about a few days prior. This is, I would say, um, shamelessly um, what is the right word here? Um, using the mistakes the opposition makes maybe if that gives you a little bit of an idea where i'm going with that it is there's this is this is a, a very powerful energy of focused war strategy hmm? you could say that opposition with um, saturn and naturally we need to be very strategic this is a this is an, a well-seasoned and um, extremely smart um, energy we're up against so it uh, to outsmart uh, that uh, it's it it needs to be polished and focused and that is happening and then naturally the side effect is that neptune will go through this transformation i was talking about in my latest one of being a collective experience seeing through the layers of deception and of corruption and all of that everything coming to light it's like the fog is lifting that would be a way to say it. it's crystallizing so Yes, uh, I, I really thought I wanted to show you this chart and I have here the heliocentric chart of this moment and that is not less intense with a Mercury-Uranus opposition here. Mercury in uh, um, Scorpio here, heliocentrically and uh, geocentric it is in Taurus hmm. that is what happens when Mercury is retrograde because it's it appears to be um, on the side of the Sun but truly it is in that sense from the sun seen on the other end of the zodiac so that's that's the difference you see we are here in the middle when we look from earth then mercury first the sun behind so to say and if we go to the sun in the middle here then earth is here and then naturally um yeah th this is this is confusing here too sorry <laughs> so um so the sun is in the middle here, Uranus on one side, Earth and Mercury on the other side. That is how I should say it. Anyway, so this opposition in itself, and this is uh, pretty much in its prime. Again, that um, Uranus brings in also the, the tension and the 
and the, the great um, stress uh, which is felt in that situation. The beautiful thing here, however, is this um, Pluto Hygieia conjunction mm -hmm. that happens within hours actually. You see here, I have it. That's actually not the one I want to show you. This is the one I want to show you. We get to the other one. So on May 4th, that's just the night before that um, May 5th event here. You see, this is for 43.33 p.m. And then if we go to this one, this is 5.22.30 p.m. So not even half an hour or something like that. And um, they are very closely linked, these two events. Here you see, this is... Um, Ascendant 23, 12, and this is, again, I have the wrong one here, 20, 16, 20, so see, this is uh, 7 degrees prior, if we look at the Ascendant. So these two events are closely linked. And um, I'm going back to this chart just to show you the heliocentric picture here. So Hijaya, Hijaya is health, well-being, serendipity. With the focus on health as we speak, this is really the center point of, of, of the whole game we are looking at here. This is um, uh, a a true, um, how would you say, a transformation, um, a transmutation uh, of, of the idea of what health and healthcare is. All that goes through radical shifts and turbulences, a recreation of new ideas at the same time, but also a close um, inspection of that whole theme as such. So health well-being is at the center here of this heliocentric chart and then Saturn here also at the very beginning of Pisces heliocentrically touching into the Neptunian realm getting ready to for its final catch so to say to, to truly nail this energy down and make it visible. I found this interesting on that subject. If you take the midpoint between Aspelus fifth opposition to the galactic center of May the fifth, which actually is the fifth of fifth on May the fifth, interesting in itself, referencing maybe to <laughs> the seventeenth letter and such with um, uh, the five five and. Uh, at the highest level avalanche and whatnot. I mean, it's uh, possible that this is really the time when the awakening has reached that level of a thundering avalanche. I wouldn't be surprised. That is kind of the what I'm getting out of this chart too. I just want to bring again the Neptune in the chart, Neptune's discovery chart, which is a really a great reference. Uh, this seems to be um, one of the most important charts of our times, this one here, which I discussed in yesterday's video more in detail. So um, this is the midpoint and you see we have that 18 degrees um, Leo, Scorpio, 19th degree Leo and you see these are the degrees of the discovery chart 1834 is the ascendant 1834 um, Scorpio is the descendant so Jupiter here by midpoint is right at the seventh house cusp of, cusp of this Neptune discovery chart 
this is um, great. Um, um, uh, how would you say that the great event of, of outing of um, gaining past publicity? It's kind of the the moment you go public in a way. That is, um, one could say, so Neptune going public and a new way with Juno here. So. I guess it is really an oceanic event which we are uh, uh, in the middle of building up to. And naturally, um, we have, um, yeah, I mean, again, there's so, so much going on in this chart with that Saturn here. That's another one which really stands out. You see, this is a midpoint chart, so this dates to 1935, between 1846 and 2023, that is the exact midpoint. Saturn at that time was pretty close to where it is right now, actually. You see, um, 2618, 2553, 2508, you see what's going on here. This is... Um, this is a very strong Saturn um, frequency here on this Neptune. Yes, there is something like detention happening, capturing. Also, the Sun in this midpoint chart here, right at the 10th house cusp of this Neptune chart. So we're talking big business here. Hmm? and. If anything, this is probably the most uh, telling 109 Aquarius midpoint Mercury most exactly aligned to the North Node, the evolutionary direction of this relationship. Ospolus being the one who uncovers the tracks of Neptune and brings clarity into the whole situation it is um pretty strong hmm? and again this is where by transit on may 5th pluto is hmm? you get even more of that compelling challenge of uh, that push for something which cannot be avoided that's kind of what pluto often is a superb force, pressure, push, compulsion to get to the bottom of something and to um, to renew it from inside out. Um, that's very plutonic. Death and resurrection, phoenix, all of that. And um, yes, you see in, in this in this chart, uh, the Sun in Capricorn, Saturn's sign. And then all this Aquarian energy. And last but not least, the Moon here at mid-Taurus, pretty close to where Uranus is. Uranus is at 18 here at this point. Uh, if we go back to this chart here, you see that is um, May the 4th or May the 5th. Actually, it is May the 4th. Um, yes. So forgive me if I said that wrong. <laughs> In the Far East, uh, it is, um, if we go Japan, there it would be already the 5th. And in Australia, it is the 5th. So it is um, kind of on the date line depending where you are on this planet. But yes, Uranus 1838, you see 1834, that's Neptune's discovery um, ascendant. Hmm? That will be the first exact hit, hmm? the third, sorry. The last two, you can go back into the library. I talked about that, that multiple activation of Neptune's chart with 
Uranus and Saturn both as the main players here, but there's much, much more than that. Anyway, I thought this was pretty cool to show you this, to give you a little bit of um, a perspective, an outlook, because that's uh, really what um, astrology allows me to do. I'm climbing up onto the trees, so to say, and so I have a little bit of a, f of a, of a more uh, expanded uh, field of view you might stand down on the ground and you see probably uh, uh, so far and uh, being up on top of the mountain and uh, uh, in the trees you can see far far ahead and that's what astrology allows that's the wonderful thing about it yes it's just purely energetic it can still take on many many different forms but if we approach these energies, these potentials with the right focus and with the right intentions, then we can guide them, we can give them a particular shape, expression. That's why this um, is such an important thing for more and more people to understand the symbols and understand the power of these symbols and that we have the, the potential to give these symbols a particular form and expression manifestation that's all which matters and again in the end the, the really important qualities are love and courage that's all we need and if we have if we feel the love in our heart for each other and ourselves to start with because that's where everything starts if i love myself yes um then i am able to love anyone else it's kind of what i have in abundance i can share it's very simple so but courage is the other one which is super important the courage to go into new land into the uncharted to be a pioneer and it's actually super exciting it's just the beginning it's getting a little bit out of the regular rut and uh, routine which anyway are um, enemies we should um, I mean and you never should say should but still it is a good advice to break routines on a regular base invent yourself renew yourself do things in a different way eat things you haven't tasted before all of that uh, watch out for for topics and things you you have not yet really been having the time to do so we all have all these many things we would love to do and we haven't really gone there this is the time this is really the time to celebrate already the rest is happening it's on its own schedule but everything is toppling already that the dominoes are falling we are better off to use this time to um, create a, a positive energy field hmm? uh, if you you might have heard the name lynn taggart she wrote a, a very um, important book, The Field. She's a scientist, a physicist, and, and she comes from that angle, but she understood that everything is interconnected in the field, and it ex definitely goes way, way beyond the physical. Everything is vibrating in sync with one another. When we think of someone this is a real connection we are making all of that anyway i'm babbling here i just um i'm super excited about what's coming it won't be easy it will be a uphill battle still we have to stand our ground we have to be loud and 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 um, don't hold back don't censor yourself super important and know that 
whatever you are facing these are just silhouettes at this time they have no backing they have no power behind them they're just pretending they're panicking they're running out of steam out of resources very very soon because they're losing support left right and center anyway it's super super exciting and i wish you a, a great um, time i mean just the last one which i really haven't really honor been honoring enough here in this chart is that jupiter right at the seventh house cusp this is beautiful jupiter in the seventh and, and uranus too this is truly speaking of um, uh, a lively um meeting with other people um very colorful rich um full of pioneer spirit here with this aries uh, energy and um ready to explore and go deeper into the unknown with uranus here at the eighth house cusp this is quite a mystical magical connection here so there's something of that sort happening too something truly extraordinary something nobody uh, would have seen coming again thank you for listening and um the next one i will do is back on the comet because this is still the most fascinating um subject of our times it really feels more and more that this is real this comet has brought in an energy activated an energy uh, which since is growing and expanding it's still in the preparation mode as i said till march uh, 3rd 5th around when the comet will turn direct in the same degree as mars <laughs> anyway thank you for joining and listening and i would say uh, i would like to really say a big thank you for those of you who are supporting me it's wonderful it's so um encouraging and um empowering and i then know i do the right thing people are enjoying what i'm doing and it is important in these present times to support what you love and to love what you support <laughs> that makes any sense doesn't matter thank you and um see you soon